Tell me now, what is the biggest improvement to your sound beside buying a new hi-fi gear that you can bring tangible results for less money? Is it new cables? Well, yes, if you have stock cables, investing in some nice cables could bring tangible results as it will unlock your system. Is it power filtering? Well, I guess if you have a lot of issues with grounding and polluted current, so some better power cables and power filter conditioning will also bring tangible results. But no, the greatest thing you can afford to your system that will improve your sound dramatically is room treatment. Now, I know room treatment is kinda ugly. The, the room treatment is expensive and will require certain knowledges and expertise to be done correctly. But once you cross the threshold that you have invested a lot of money in your system to truly unlock the potential of your device, you need to clear the bouncing of sound waves and buildups. Six months ago, I bought Blue Sound Node Icon and I got recommended to try Dirac. As it is a golden tool that helps you fix all your room's problems. Intriguing, isn't it? So I decided to buy Direc and to test it in my room. And one note, my room is half treated. I never managed to treat it fully. It is partly lack of funds, but mostly is that my room is like super weird and there are some spots that you cannot put panels and traps on. I mean, in one corner of my room, there's a hanging base trap over my head every time I pass there. It is an accident writing to happen. It would be funny, like headline to say something like an audiophile killed by bus trap. But the sound is 80% perfect how I wanted. So I was almost there. But can this tool really help me to get to 100%? And what I can tell you is that Dirac did some things perfectly. And at some, it just shaves too much to my liking. But let's take things step by step. How can you start using Dirac? Well, first, obviously, you need device that is Dirac Live compatible. In my case, it is Blue Sound Node. But there are a lot of devices from Arkham, NAD and Blue Sound, etc. And once you know that, you understand that you need to buy a license. There are two options here. One is limited for $160, which works in an area of 20 Hz to 500 Hz, and other is full bandwidth for $250 that work in an area of 20 Hz and 20 kHz. Now, my opinion here is that you buy full bandwidth and don't bother with a limited one. You need it to clear not just bass, but also an upper mids and treble. Uh, doing half job is not something I recommend. But if you buy limited, you can easily jump to full bandwidth for just $100. Besides frequency response, both limited and full bring the same goodies that include also, improvement in impulse response timing. Now that you have license, you need to install the Dirac app on your computer or phone. Connect that license and you're ready to improve your audio file life. But to start measuring your room acoustics and impulses, you need a measuring mic. It also needs to be an omnidirectional to truly work. Now, Dirac offers their own measuring mic, which is $60, it is a good thing and a good value. And the good thing for that is that you can connect it to your own Blue Sound node or computer directly without a need of an external audio interface. But for best results, I do recommend that you get mic which is passive and uses energy from audio interface to be driven. I use Zoom, H5 and Arc measuring mics. It is more expensive that way as it requires an external audio interface like Focusrite or Zoom, but it's more flexible and correct measures through them. And now you have everything and it is time for you to start using your software. Using Direct Live is a pretty intuitive, but you will need few tutorials on YouTube to truly grasp how it is being used. It will first ask you to check the gain of your microphone to see can mic truly hear your system or is it too loud and creates clipping. Here, I don't have much to say, just keep it at a normal listening volume. 
not too loud, but just how you would listen in your room. And after that comes the most important aspect of Dirac Live, and that is the room measurements. I highly recommend that you spend most of time in application here. As how my old man used to say, measure five times and cut those nasty audio frequencies once. I recommend even when you correct it once, do it few more times just to be certain. It is recommended that your microphone sits on some stand and that when you record mic remains perfectly still and you also and also it is important that you leave the path of sonic waves just so it will record it how it is when you truly listen to music. There are three modes here. One is focused, other is wide and third is group. Unless you sit on a chair that always remains in the same place during listening, I recommend that you always use wide, as it creates a larger sweet spot for music. When you do focused and you sit on a sofa, you might get sound that seems a bit bright, as the sound that Dira creates is by nature very agile and lean. So having a bigger sweet spot helps with that. I noticed that imaging in focused mode is impeccable. Truly majestic, clear and in center, just amazing. You will have instructions in application where to put your mic to measure. It has around 13 points where you need to measure. It might be a bit time consuming, but you did this once and don't do that much often after that. After you measure all the spots, let Direct do their magic and fix your sound. Dirac will give you a corrected impulse and frequency response. It's a very balanced as the system will try to make it straight line as much as possible. You will see the new better and more audio friendly frequency response and old one or the measurements of your room to see how much and where it fixed your sound. As far as I can see, Direct will try to keep the sonic profile of your room but just more balanced without any significant curves. You can then add or remove decibels on bass or treble if you need. Similarly, how you would do so if your amp has a tone controls. I feel that I always had to add a bit in bass or treble decibels so it would sound better. You can also do a sound sculpting and that's a way for you to do your own sound equalizing on a whole frequency spectrum. To add and remove decibels wherever you want and how much you want. I personally would not recommend this unless you have experience with sound engineering. As at most cases, you'll blow out something and make sound worse rather than fix it. I just let this be, but there is that option here as well. Now, when you are satisfied with your sound, you can save that response as a filter and import it to your device. After that, you will not need any more mix, direct applications and stuff like that. Just your streaming application where you can actually switch on and off that filter or to choose some other filters. Direct allows you to create five different filters and change it to however you like. It is a nice flexibility that allows and also a great way to really hear the difference you made by turning off and on Dirac Live. And you're done. Now let's go through good and the bad that I experienced with six months using it. The good thing is that it actually works, it truly does and I think the most important thing that it is supposed to do is to make your system more clear and precise. It truly does that. Uh, you will hear right away more transparency, more insights in details, a better imaging of vocals in the middle. It controls frequencies so well that it makes your system behave on a singular playing field. That means all the excess frequencies have their decibels removed, so it will not veil other frequencies and make so much more space for all the instruments voices to be heard and more three-dimensional on soundstage. If you had issues with bass buildup in your room, not anymore, as it will control and allow your speakers to push as much as air as need to not overpower other instruments. If you had issue with the treble being bright and fatiguing, it will shave it enough to have power but yet to be more manageable in line with others. But the biggest plus for me is how it handles voices. 
It truly gives them great focus and lane. They become the star of the show. They are firmly in the middle, completely unbothered from others. You can hear it very crystal and it makes those great sing-alongs more better now. Your system now is unbothered, showing details and insights as it is more clear and vivid. One spectacular point is also that when it phase corrects the frequencies, it does not do that for both of speakers, but for both left and right individually. This is a great point as it helps with irregular rooms a lot. As with early reflections and bass buildups, you can have different sounds coming from left and right. This application notices that and will put different signals for each of your speakers. This is a mighty fine thing as it will help with irregularity of systems in rooms that are differently furnished on left and right, or if the system is not in the center of your room. So absolutely, it does deliver on its promises and it is a tool that I can recommend to everyone. I also tested this at friend's place where he believed he had no problem with sound and he was shocked how much clearer the sound was. So if you can, please check this out somehow. While I think this is a tool that can help every audiophile out there, there are some problems you should be thinking about. First, it is in its execution. So what this tool does is find excessive signal on frequency scale and tells an internal device to shave decibels there. And it happens across an entire spectrum. And that creates two problems. First off, it disturbs the emotional core of your speakers by forcing it to be more neutral. So it means all those warm or bright speakers will lose their edge with this modeling. Of course, I don't mean they will become like automatically fully balanced, but they will be less bassy or and treble rich. Some speakers will lose their uniqueness, they will have less emotions to them. It is that last spark that speakers make that make them unique. The other thing is the decibels they shave contain details in them. It contains insight. That additional corners on soundstage, that additional extension of percussions or low kick, and there is no way to control that, to create a compromise between shaven area and original. But this is all on a gear-to-gear -gear basis. More balanced gear will have less decibels slashed, but this is all on gear-to-gear -gear basis. More balanced gear will have less decibels shaved. Uh, my Class D amps with balanced speakers had smaller changes compared to like Marantz with triangles, for example. Also, one more point, it creates more taxation on your amp, as the signal from the source is going to be weaker. Therefore, your amp will need to add more juice to drive speakers. This is a small issue, only will be prevalent if you have a weak amp driving hard to drive speakers and it is firing on all sol cylinders to do so. So this might push it over the edge. There's also an issue that app does not have any onboarding or tutorials or anything similar to help you. So to understand how to measure, it requires an additional exploration on YouTube. And even then it is not fully clear where to place the mic in order to take best measurements. What I would improve about all this for maybe some MK2 is absolutely to have some presets, like enhancing lower mids or enhancing upper mids and, uh, cli and clicking on them. And clicking on them, they would add decibels to certain areas or something like rock preset, classical preset, jazz preset, in order to give more flourish to a new measured results. That way, listeners and users will have more flexibility and more experimentation to find their perfect sound. As I said earlier, there is no good onboarding or tutorials, so many things are left on user to discover by himself exploring the internet and just exploring this app. But there should be some hints in this app telling you what to do. And that visual plane where it shows listeners uh, the spots around him to measure it should be 
in 3D or in more angled pictures to get sense how much forward and back of a listener you should set your microphone for best results. Like give me more like angled picture with different angles just to see it from this, from here, from back. Because I don't understand the distance and where exactly to put microphone. Give us how perfect position looks and we will try to mimic it. There is, of course, an advanced way to do this with a mobile camera where you can take photo of your listening position and it will show you where are the spots you should put your microphone. But this is kind of advanced. Just do it in a more simpler way. More pictures, more images or just 3D image telling you and showing you where to put your microphone correctly. Now, will you enjoy the new sound is highly subjective. But reality is that the new sound that Direct mixes up is objectively better. It is for all the people who love measurements, objective reviews, a better sound. It is amazing for those looking for precise sound. But even though it is an objectively better sound, it does not make it subjectively better. Remember that. As we all started to love this hobby, not as to get the perfect sound, but the sound that moves us the most. And for me, in many cases, sound that was objectively not good was subjectively better, as it did some special things that I like, a special sauce, which required some irregularities on frequencies and some playing by audio engineers, and some speakers which by reviews of others that objectively measured things, they said was great, I was severely underwhelmed by their performances. And be mindful of break-in period. So after your sound dramatically changes in front of you, you might not be happy with the results right away. But let it sit, let it cook, and you might start appreciating a whole new experience that your speakers now deliver. So because such a quick change, dramatic change right away might take some people by surprise. So how much you enjoy this is highly upon you. Like with any other tool, the usefulness of it comes from the problems you have. Does it work? Yes, absolutely. It is a tool that every audiophile should have in its arsenal, as when it works, it works fabulously. The problem of selling this tool is that not many people know they have this issue. Many think, and I spoke around this subject with a few people, that to improve clarity, details, soundstage, they need to buy new gear, better gear. Yet no one talks about how it is your room that is suffocating the potential of your gear. Everyone thinks their room is just fine. And this kind of adjustment, which is not expensive, could improve your sound without spending a lot of money on your next gear. Is it perfect? Unfortunately, no. I cannot put all my needs in its digital hands. But it did improve a lot of musical listening scenarios for me, especially around more acoustic music or more vocal-oriented music. It did help with precision, clarity and imaging a lot. And more often than not, I have been using it. But from time to time, I do miss the sound I forged in my room. So I tend for some scenarios and some gear to not use it. Rather, I'm satisfied with acoustics in my room. So it will be subjective improvements from gear to gear, room to room, listener to listener. But as I said, with such an ease to use, ease to buy and acquire, you should definitely try it and let it shock you how much it improves the sound for you. You will not be able to live without it one way or another. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and subscribing. Keep daydreaming and see you in our next video. Bye!